everybody. Are you ready to read our second book today? I know Pua is very excited. So this Three Little Pigs book is called The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. It's a little bit backwards. And it's by Eugene Trevazes and Helen Oxenbury. So I hope you see some similarities and differences between this and the other version. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it is time for you to go out into the world. Go and build a house for yourselves, but beware of the big, bad pig. Don't worry, mother, we will watch out for him said the three little wolves, and they set off. Soon they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please, will you give us some of your bricks? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Look at that teamwork. The very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. You can see him right there. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, Little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, but the house, it didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer, ooh, and he knocked the house down. The three little wolves only just managed to escape before the bricks crumbled, and they were very frightened indeed. We shall have to build a stronger house, they said. Just then they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the beaver, and he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. No sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were playing a battledore and shuttlecock in the garden, and when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. The pig rang the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he puffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down. Oof. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. Just then, they saw a truck coming along the road carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. That's pretty heavy duty. Please will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars, and armor plates, and some heavy metal padlocks, they said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros, and he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass and some reinforced steel chains because he was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. 
So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. 37? Wow. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china pot. Then I'll huff and I'll huff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, lit the fuse, and... The house blew up. The three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different, but what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please, please, will you give us some flowers? asked the three little wolves. With pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. Hmm. One wall was of marigolds, one of daffodils, one of pink roses, and one of cherry blossoms. The ceilings were made of sunflowers, and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house, and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. Next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the bluebell at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of flowers. It was fantastic, and because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. Hmm. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender, and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then, he decided to become a big, good pig. He started to sing and to dance the tarantella. At first, the three little wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick. But soon they realized that the pig had truly changed, so they came running out of the house and they started playing games with him. First, they played a pig pog and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. They offered him tea and strawberries and wolfberries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived happily together ever after. I have to say I really enjoy the ending of this book because everybody ends happily. So now that you've heard those two books, I'm going to go over how you can go about comparing and contrasting their similarities and differences. All right, so now that we have read these two versions of The Three Little Pigs, and you probably know the original version, so you know three versions of The Three Little Pigs, we're going to compare and contrast them. So this is a thinking map, and it's called a double bubble map. So what you do in this is you can write things that are the same and different for two different items. You also might be familiar with using a Venn diagram, which looks like two circles coming together where they overlap in the middle. 
The overlap in the middle is to show what is the same about the two things, and the outside areas are to contrast what is different. Okay? So if you would like to do a double bubble today, you're going to write your two books that you would like to talk about. So maybe you do the original Three Little Pigs and the Three Little Javelinas. Okay? So if you're going to compare those two books, in the middle here, you're going to write thoughts that are the same about these two books and then draw a circle around them. Okay? On the outsides, you're going to write differences, which means this side you're only going to write things about the Three Little Pigs that did not happen in the Three Little Javelinas. Okay? These are differences. And over here, you're going to write things that only happened in the Three Little Javelinas. They did not happen in Three Little Pigs. They're different. Okay? So you can do that with any of these books that you'd like. You could talk about these two books that I read today to you, or you can use the original Three Little Pigs. If you know a different version, you could even use that one. So I hope you enjoy comparing and contrasting your thoughts about how the Three Little Pig stories are the same and different. And when you're done for an extra challenge, if you would like to do some writing today, you can use your double bubble map or your Venn diagram to write some sentences that you learned about what is the same and different about the Three Little Pigs. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed those two books, and I hope you have a great day.